She's not just my one-time co-star, but a founding member and the lead vocalist for the hard rock symphonic metal band Edge of Paradise. Margarita Monet joins me next on RxG Exclusives. We must open up our minds and take a look inside. I bet we find we hold all the answers tonight. You're watching the award-winning RxG Exclusive, hosted by award-winning actor and award-winning filmmaker Robert X. Golfing. Known for their massive sound, cinematic and futuristic visuals, and visceral live performances, Edge of Paradise has set stages ablaze in the likes of the US, Japan, and Europe. With charting records, an eagerly awaited fifth album set to drop this summer and two EPs under their belt, they're on the brink of another major milestone in their career. A great deal of that success can be attributed to their lead vocalist. I am so thrilled to welcome to the show Margarita Monet. Long time no see, no speak. Thanks for being here. Oh, thank you so much for having me. So good to see you too. Time flies. It certainly does. About a year or so after you formed the band Edge of Paradise, you joined the cast of The Storm an original pop rock musical. Despite being relatively new to the scene, you were pretty known in some circles. And I remember as news spread amongst our castmates, I heard murmurs of, oh my gosh, it's the girl from Edge of Paradise. It's the girl from Edge of Paradise. But you brought a professional yet humble and personable demeanor. You just had a spirit that, that shone through and it was truly an honor to work with you. I have to say, the show's music diverged a bit from your band's genre, and some performers in the show felt a desire to showcase their vocal abilities beyond what the production permitted. How did you navigate the balance between your otherworldly voice and the collaborative nature of a musical, and the, did the two musical styles challenge you in any way? Well, first of all, thank you for such an introduction. And I must say, likewise, it was amazing to work with you. And it was such a wonderful time. Um, you know, I, before that, I lived in New York and I went to college for musical, well, not musical theater, for theater. Um, when I was in high school, I was in musical theater and I actually got kicked out of <laughs> because <laughs> they, they thought that I was better at, you know, dramatic um, acting and they put me in like regular theater. They're like, you cry better than you sing. <laughs> so, um, you know, I was very familiar and, you know, in, felt in my own element in theater. But when it came to musicals, it was a little bit outside of my comfort zone. So when we were doing The Storm, and actually, because I used to teach at the school, so I taught piano. So when she approached me to do uh, Kate, when she approached me to do the musical, um, you know, I was excited about it, but it was a little bit, uh, you know, I didn't expect it at all. So and that's Kate Nelson who wrote the show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, I actually, I loved the music. It was a lot of fun. Um, it was a very specific style that you wanted. So, you know, like when you're an actor, you always have to sort of uh, do what the character or what the show requires you to do. So, you know, I, I took it upon as just like what what is best for the show, what is the show required, but it did take a lot of adjustment. Um, and uh, when you do your own music, your own band, it's more about, you know, your own feeling, your own emotion. It, it, it's actually a little bit easier, right? Because you just put yourself into it, where for the show, you have to do whatever the character requires, do whatever the director wants you to do. So it was a bit of a challenge in that way, but it was so much fun. Uh, yeah, I, I always look back at those times with a smile. And Dave, who is my co-founding member, the guitar player, he was in the band for the, for the show. So yeah, it was fun. 
Yeah, fun times for sure. I remember my co-star Jocelyn Michelle Garrett and I in the last few days of the run started vocally embellishing a bit because we weren't able to yeah. do that before, but it was a lot of fun. Now from Armenia to Russia, Texas to the Big Apple, and finally the bright lights of Hollywood, you've had quite the voyage. When did you first discover your creative gifts? And how did each of those places play a role in your life and career? Yeah, you know, I got to attribute it to my parents, well, my mom, <laughs> mainly because um, my dad is a scientist and my mom, she was always kind of in the arts, but she's a historian um, by um, her profession. Uh, but when we moved from Armenia to Moscow, it was during the times when, you know, Soviet Union fell apart. So my parents, they uh, had to basically start from zero again, um, moving to a new country. I mean, you know, back then, uh, Russia, Armenia, it was all Soviet Union. So it wasn't like moving to America where everything was so new. It was still very familiar, but still, you know, Moscow, it's a big city. So my mom worked at this arts academy and she taught English there. And um, I was like three years old. So they couldn't leave me with anybody because it was just my mom and my dad. So my mom would always take me to work with her. And while she was teaching, I would take all the classes. I would take dance, I would take theater, uh, singing, whatever else they had there. I was just all day in the arts. And uh, I think um, that really made me, well, I loved it. And from then on, I just continued it because I couldn't imagine doing anything else. Um, when we moved from Moscow to Houston, um, I went to middle school there. And, you know, I was in theater, but it wasn't anything. It was like middle school theater. But I continued playing piano. Um, I did a lot of competitions. And then I went to an arts high school because I just, you know, I couldn't see another path. So I went to an arts high school and then I went to theater um, college in New York. But my uh, my dad's side always was in me as well. Like when I went to NYU, I took a lot of astronomy classes and biology. So I always had that um, love for science as well. And now in music too, I like a lot of the themes. I love to drop from, you know, kind of, science and futuristic and technology point of view so I'm very interested in that as well but overall um, I think just growing up in the arts really put that foundation in me and I just you know couldn't see myself do anything else. Now you mentioned your parents who has been your greatest source of encouragement in the pursuit of your dreams and please share some of your influences along the way. Well, my parents always supported me. Um, you know, parents always want what's best for you. So there might be some uh, instances where they're like, well, you do good at school. Why don't you be a doctor, a lawyer? <laughs> Something like that. But, of course, but yes. the, they, uh, Yeah, but ultimately they always wanted me to pursue what I was passionate about and they always supported me. In that. Um, I, you know, i got to say, like growing up in Moscow, one of the highlights is that um like theaters museums it's so accessible like even when you go to school like every other week they would take you to field trips to see like in a theater show or ballet or opera or whatever so it was always very inspiring for me to see other performances other artists and i always um attributed um you know kind of having that outside influence to inspire me to do that. Um, you know, but I don't, I don't know if I could point out a specific thing that inspired me. I think just overall, like going to New York after, um, you know, seeing all of that around me, you know, being, you know, seeing Broadway shows, like one of my teachers was on, in a Broadway show, so going to see him. Uh, just... It always made me feel like I wanted to be part of that world. So it's inspirational. Now, beyond your musical prowess, you've created lyric and art books as well as original paintings. They're all available for purchase. And these works are wonderful companion pieces to your albums. They really let fans delve deep into your 
creative universe, what inspired you to share this part of yourself with others? And how does this help set Edge of Paradise apart from all the other bands that are out there? Um, when I started the band, I always wanted it to be a sort of multidimensional. So it's not just music. So people can experience it through the music videos, you know, through uh, live shows, and through the art. I always uh, wanted to have the visuals to support the music. Um, but, you know, started to paint, going back to painting, um, my mom always painted when I was little, and I always loved painting with her as well. So I never really thought I'd do it until, I don't know, it was like maybe five years ago, I just made something and I posted it online, and people <laughs> seemed to have an interest. So I just kept doing it, and then eventually it grew into something that I didn't really expect. And then I was like, well, maybe I should just start incorporating it into the band. And eventually, like when we did the Unknown album, which was um, into 2020, we made the album, and it was released in 2021. And it was during the pandemic, so, you know, everybody's in the house. So uh, I had a lot of time, and for each song, I started making an art and eventually that turned into an art book. So every um, art piece accompanies with the lyrics and, uh, uh, you know, uh, people, so each art piece went to someone. Um, and then eventually when it turned into a book, um, you know, people could get it and read the lyrics um, that goes along with the piece and, you know, so forth. But yeah, I mean, um, I think it's kind of... Uh, well, for me, I really love it because I love to paint and incorporate it with a band. I think it's just, it makes, I don't know, uh, just another thing that I guess I could bring to the whole experience of Edge of Paradise. I'm just grateful people have an interest in it. Taste of your weakness. They feast on the blood of trust. Faceless men in fancy suits will suck your spirit dry. Men with knives shape our minds, they sell reality. What is wrong? What is right? Seems like we lost our sight. Powerful lyrics from your song, Hollow, just an example of music with something to say that you can also picture in your head. Do you aim to make music with a message? And are you intentionally trying to evoke specific emotions in listeners when you sing? Yes, um, always. I always want to make the lyrics have substance and make people think. Um, and because, like, for example, when I watch movies, my favorite movies are when after it's over, I think about it for days. So when with the songs, I kind of want to um, create a similar experience, but ultimately have a positive message and make people uh, feel you know positive, but still think about it. So um, I uh, always uh, draw from you know my own personal experiences, but also looking um, at the world because also I think uh, growing up in different places and seeing different sides of the world um, makes me have a certain outlook on life and just look at things from a certain perspective. So uh, that song, um, I think, just, uh, um, you know, describes what we're heading, the future we're heading towards, because everything is becoming so, in a way, commercialized. Um, some of the personality is lost. Like, even I was talking to an artist the other day, the artist that created the cover art for this upcoming album, Hologram, and he is an amazing concept artist, Alex Ruiz, and he did a lot of concept art for Marvel, for Disney. And he was saying, you know, now these big companies, instead of hiring artists, they just rely on artificial intelligence, on AI, because it's so much faster and it's way cheaper, right, than hiring a human. But I feel like it really takes away the creativity, the humanity from just, you know, the end um Piece, whatever it may be, whatever, wherever, whether it's a movie, whether it's music, um, I think just relying strictly on 
artificial intelligence, at least for now, right? It just makes everything streamlined and um, I'm not a big fan of it. I just, I feel like we still need the human aspect, especially in art. So, you know, I uh, want to make people think about that, uh, make people support the humanity of it, whether it's in the arts or any other field. And just, I think the rise of artificial intelligence, I think technology is evolving faster than we can catch up to it. So there's a lot of um, good with it, but I feel like there's a lot of danger as well that maybe some pe- maybe people are not really, you know, thinking about, oh, obviously on a daily basis, right? So I just think we're heading towards an interesting future and uh, we should have our eyes open and, um, yeah, be ready for it and what, whatever it may bring. Absolutely. It seems like we should have been prepared by now, but for some reason we aren't. But I digress. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> now, Margarita, could you share your secret to maintaining such an extraordinary vocal range? Do you have any specific techniques like wearing a scarf over your throat or vocal warm-up exercises every day? How do you safeguard the instrument that is your voice? You know, when we're on tour, I'm always like, please don't get sick. Like, <laughs> uh, don't lose your voice. I'm always kind of, you know, you have anxiety about it because if you think about it, you know, you, you can get sick and still play guitar, but it's your voice. You're pretty much screwed if your voice is gone. So, um, you know, I try to, I don't think I have one particular thing. Um, I try to eat healthy. I try to go to the gym. I feel like when I'm strong, that's when my voice is optimum. Just, you know, be healthy overall. Um, try to. <laughs> but, um, you know, when we're recording songs, I feel like a little, uh, just the approach of not thinking that you have limitations, I feel like that helps me evolve my range because when I write songs, I always, hear the melodies in my head, whatever the song needs, I just go into the studio and I just think like I got to do what the song needs. And even though I might not be able to think that I'm able to reach that at, you know, at that time, I'm just having that mindset of being limitless, um, I feel like really helps me evolve as a singer. And then once the song's recorded, because, you know, in a studio, you can do certain things like you can take breaks, you can do one line at a time. So that helps you create whatever you envision. But then when you are trying to, um, you know, perform that song live at rehearsals, then that's where the real work begins because you got to build the endurance. You got to figure out how to reach those notes and not get tired and not break your voice so it just takes a lot of practice takes a lot of endurance training and just a lot of rehearsing (laughs) but then your voice gets there i think like human body is so powerful in that way um you just you know if you train towards a goal you can reach it and then just you know obviously be mindful and be careful with it um you know (laughs) It's possible. Anything's possible. Now, Edge of Paradise has many music videos out there, but I hear that sometimes when you all are traveling from one location to another, you shoot videos then. Is that right? (laughs) Well, yeah, there's been instances. You know, sometimes, like, when we uh, probably three videos from an album, we really plan out, we really make big productions. But I... You know, I, I'm a visual person and I love making videos. So when we were in Europe, um, we were in UK originally and we were traveling to Belgium. And so I told the guys, I'm like, we have, we have this like short space of time. <laughs> Let's go to Netherlands. We found this really beautiful church. We used our iPhones. <laughs> we just filmed it. And then I edited it together. So yeah, like we tried to, um, you know, be as creative as we can and use 
what we have and obviously europe has so many beautiful places so no sense in wasting time <laughs> yeah yeah now, aside from our time on stage at the former NoHo Arts Center in L.A., you've appeared in off-Broadway plays, short films, and features. What do you look forward to accomplishing next, and is there another musical in your future? You know, my life has led me in a stranger ways, so I never know what's around the corner. I mean, I know that um, definitely with the band, we have a lot of plans. We have a lot of tours coming up. I want to keep evolving our music videos to make them almost like short films because a lot of the albums, they're starting to have certain storylines that keep evolving with each album and we keep building on it. Like I want to create a graphic novel for this um, album that's coming out and eventually, you know, um, create short films around it and maybe a feature film. Who knows what's, the, what's down the line? But as the band grows, I want to keep growing on the, in that visual aspect as well. But, you know, I love theater. I love film. So if there's an opportunity, I would, you know, always pursue it because um, I grew up loving it. And, uh, you know, the band's always the priority because it's kind of like my passion project. But if I'm able to and if the opportunity arises, I'm always always open to it say that i think what needs to happen is that the entire cast needs to come together for a one night only special performance of the show so if kate nelson's out there listening we need to make that happen <laughs> i would love that <laughs> yeah let's make it happen now from american issues involving women's rights people of color and the lgbtqia plus community to the Russia-Ukraine conflict, the last few years have been tumultuous, to say the least. How does your artistry help you find light in this world, and do you have any words for your fans who may be going through particularly difficult times right now? Mm -hmm. That's a heavy question because, unfortunately, this time in the world is, because I have family, uh, you know, in Russia and Ukraine, and then obviously I have so many friends in, you know, that are artists or in the LGBTQ community. So um, it's a very difficult question to answer because you there's so much to say about it. But I feel like art is what brings light to it all, right? Art is what unites us. Art has no barriers, like going to different countries, performing. There's never any, there's never any issues that, um, you know, separate us when it comes to art. So I think that's what's really beautiful about it. That's what brings light to the world. And I think it's important to protect artists because um, of what artists contribute to the world. And I feel like um, these days we have so much power to change the world for the better, right? Because if we unite, even like I was watching, this is kind of a different topic, but I was watching this documentary yesterday about how there is so much technology that can create um, energy that would save, basically, you know, eliminate hunger, put everybody on the same level because it would be free energy. So it would completely reshape the world. And it's really up to people to um, advocate for that technology because big corporations, you know, big oil companies, obviously they don't want they don't want the world to change. They don't want us not having to use gas to put in our cars or pay for electricity, right? So if that technology becomes public, that technology becomes public for all the scientists to just recreate then it's really going to be up to the people to change the world. And then um, the masses are against these big corporations and then they won't be able to really put a stop to it. So I think that kind of similar analogy goes to the artists because um, now we are, you know, this generation and we really didn't grow up with races. Like I remember going to school, like nobody had, 
you know, I had so many friends from all across communities and we never really had any even thoughts about race. Everybody was equal. And then I feel like as you grow older, society sort of imposes those ideas into your head, right? And then that's kind of when things get get sideways. So I think it's really up to us now to rebuild a new world, you know, and just um, spread positivity across and eliminate every negative aspect that can go with racism or, you know, any other issues. Um, we have, I feel like we have the power to really um, change the world for the best. <laughs> a lot, a lot to say on this. No, but definitely wise words and, and something to think about. Before we part, is there anything else you'd like to share? Maybe plug the new album? <laughs> well, I want to say thank you. It's been such a pleasure to speak with you. Thank you for reaching out, and I hope we keep in touch. Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah, the, so the album is called Hologram. It's coming out July 14th. And we're going to be doing an East Coast tour soon and more, more U.S. dates. We're going to go to Canada, Mexico, Europe next year. So I hope we, we see you. Um, if you ever want to come out to the show, definitely let me know. I'd love to invite you. But yeah, I just want to say thank you to all the people. Thank you for supporting us. And I wish everybody a um, wonderful summer and fall. Uh, time time goes by really fast, so let's enjoy the moment. Absolutely. Yeah. So. Well, from the band Edge of Paradise and my former co-star Margarita <laughs> Monet, thank you so much. It's been a thrill reminiscing and reuniting. Thanks for being here. Likewise. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, hope to see you. Hope to see you soon. And thank you for watching RXG Exclusives. I'll see you next time. Make sure to like, comment, and hit subscribe on our YouTube channel so you never miss out. RxG Exclusives, hosted by Robert X. Golfin, now playing.